Hey everybody, it's David here. Saturday morning. All right, let's get this going. I have a couple of announcements to make before we get going. Um, I want to thank a bunch of people. Um, I don't think I can mention everybody's name to thank, but I got a, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of cards hey and letters. It's David here. Saturday morning. Uh, I gotta turn down my volume there. Uh, but. Um, Got a bunch of these cards and letters from all my students and uh, many of my students and donated um, some funds and I've got a lot of people buying my stuff online to keep my, my studio open here. So I want to thank everybody that has um, even given and um, bought some of my paintings. It's really um, super fun and super amazing that um, you guys are out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so today um, I also want to let you know that I finally got my cameras um, delivered and so I'm gonna have next week we're gonna probably have two cameras on this whole thing one on me one on the um, on the image and actually maybe even a third camera finally I'll come in but I've got to learn how to do this first <laughs> before before I start doing the triple cameras and stuff and um, I'm also gonna be teaching some beginner classes um, these are more advanced right now. These are for my students. Um, this Saturday morning is my Saturday morning class, which is a little bit more advanced. And today, of course, is a little bit more advanced in that we are doing a figure. And um, we'll get into that in a second. And so I'm going to be selling kits. You can see right here, I'm selling kits for the beginners. And we're going to be doing um, beginner paintings. And they'll be coming up. You can just check out my website and we'll get into that um, for the beginners who want to try watercolor. And I'll be selling the kits online on my website. My website is beckerart.net. And um, also I wanted to mention, um, I am the lady next door to me who started my whole trek down this um, <laughs> class, classroom and getting this building um, was Lucy Tunyon who owns the studio. The studio is next door and we started together. Um, she had, uh, a class school there in McHenry and um, so she also like myself are struggling with in these times of this pandemic and if you want to take a check out on the studio McHenry.com she sells Annie Sloan paint she can't do classes right now because of again the pandemic and I myself included and we don't do the paint parties any longer Lucy has the studio where I do my paint parties and so if you want to help her out Look her up on the Studio McHenry, and if you, um, she sells Annie Sloan paint, which is a paint that you use on furniture, and um, give her a shout, or um, go online and maybe help her out too. Um, she sells gift certificates, you know, so when she opens up again, you can have people, you can get some stuff for them. But so those are the little announcements I want to make before we get started, but today we're going to be doing this a um, little bit more difficult subject matter. Um, people usually don't like doing watercolor figures. Uh, they usually save that for the acrylics or oil paintings and stuff, but um, there are a lot of people who do figures in watercolor. It's a little bit more difficult, it's a little bit more tough, and the most the reason for that is because the um, a figure's in it, and it's all about the drawing. And so the first thing I want to show you is that if you're not a good drawer and you haven't had a good um, amount of experience with drawing, then I ask my students when I teach my classes, we trace it, we copy the photograph and make sure you have a good photograph that you're tracing or copying. I've been an um, illustrator now for about 35 years and I learned how to draw from my imagination. So I can pretty much draw from my imagination in my head, but beginners, um, they first have to, it takes a long time to learn how to draw. So if we're doing a watercolor of a figure, a lot of times I have people in my classes use this transfer paper. This transfer paper is a, some of them like this graphite, and some of it is like a carbon paper. And what you do is you take the photograph and you put the carbon paper down onto the watercolor paper and you place it on top of it and draw it. Of course the size, you have to get the size to the size of your painting. Um, you can do that way. And uh, what I do is in my classes, like in my workshops, I, I go to Office Max and I get the picture to the size of the, of the watercolor paper and then we trace it and stuff so that we're learning more about the watercolor. When it comes to the figure, it has to look right and when that's the number one thing is get your, get your drawing right. If this drawing is not right, I don't care how good you're painting with the watercolor, it's not going to be a nice picture. 
So make sure you have a good drawing before you start anything. It's number one. Number one is the drawing of your figure and of the picture in general. If you're doing any kind of painting, number one is drawing. If you can't draw, and I know um, it's, <laughs> it's tough to draw and learn how to draw. It takes time and many, many, a lot of practice time. But again, there is a way, and, and when you take my classes, we, we trace. And I come up with good um, photographs to do that. So, that being said, now I have drawn this down um, freehand. And um, again, because I've had a lot of experience with drawing. If you can, again, use tracing paper or they have um, these projectors you can use to get your image onto the paper. Whatever you do, make sure it's a good drawing. Now I had um, drawn it up and I've got, uh, it's looking like the graphite's a really mess and this is the one trick I was talking to you about before. Oh my gosh, this is like rubber gloves. <laughs> it doesn't work so well. But what you do is you take a kneaded rubber eraser and you rub, you can rub some of this graphite down and you can roll it across the paper and you get rid of the graphite that will affect the watercolor, but it won't affect the line. And as you can tell, I already put a little bit of masking fluid down this morning because I didn't want to wait for it to dry, but to show you guys, um, I, for these little fine hairs, I used a whole fine uh, masking fluid pen. And what you do is it's basically a pen, you shake it and you squeeze this and then you just draw with it. Sometimes it's hard to start it, but you can rub it, you can um, kind of like this. It doesn't clog, it's just because it's a very fine metal point, but you can just go in there and get really fine lines. And this blue, the blue one, that's mostly comes out dark, like almost like a pencil line in the pen. But I use Holbein masking fluid for the bigger parts. And for that, I use a rubber brush. It's a brush that's actually rubbery. See, it's like a little rubber brush. So that's um, what I did before I started. So if you want to do that, go ahead and put that on there. And again, when it comes to the following along with my, what I'm doing, don't try to follow along at the same time I'm doing it because um, you're never going to follow along. I'm, I'm going to get this done in about 45 minutes. And so you don't want to, um, I know it's probably harder to get that that fast, but you can just go back to the video and just replay it and you can see and stop it when you need to. Let me just really quickly put this up on my screen so I can see if there's any questions too. All right. So is this centered under? Gary, have you seen? Is it everything okay? Okay, so he says, um, Gary, I've got Gary here, one of my buddies that um, comes and paints. Uh, he's said that my um, everything's set up pretty good on his laptop, so here we go. So we're going to start with the lights, and then this is a photograph. We'll start out with the lights. So where are our lights? The window is the light. The outer edge of the body is the light. Her face is a little bit of light, and it's always light to dark. And why do you do the light to dark? It's because you want the dark to go on top of the light. So when you're doing the light, you can go into the dark, and it won't matter. And you go around those light areas later on with the dark, and it can kind of clean up the edge. So we're just going to go in there and get some of the lights first. And so when it comes to the materials, the colors I'll be mentioning as I'm using them. When it comes to this, again, this is a colored photo, and um, you probably can't see it really good, but you're a little bit higher up, and it's really dark, and it's a kind of a darkish green, and I posted it on Facebook, so if you can take it down from there and look at it, but don't worry about these green colors. You can make it any color you want. Look for the values of these. That's more important is the values of everything. And so this is the darker part, so I'm not gonna do that first. So first, I'm just gonna go in and get a few small things. When it comes to the figure and the flesh tones, they're warm. And you don't have to use an exact red or flesh tone color. Just make it warm. Warm is fine. And so I'm going to go in here right away and get these little little things, which seems kind of weird that I normally you wear big, big areas, but because there's not much light area, so then I can go a little bit smaller and just do these little small things and get those kind of done right from the get-go going to go in there get some of the warm colors and these are the light areas not the shadow colors just the light areas the part that's going to be light later 
And some of it that the paper is white, just leave it white. Leave it white with the paper. You don't need to put something in there if it's going to be white or very light, like the window in there. You don't have to do anything. That's just white. And so just keep the white of the paper. It's usually the best to do it on that. And so now I'm going to um, take this flesh tone color and do its opposite. And it's kind of a pink. And so red, I'm going to use a little bit of this blue. You can actually use a little bit of green, but this is more of an orange, so blue and orange are complements, so that makes kind of a gray. There's a little gray in the windows here. A little gray in there. I'm just going to go right over these parts. Again, if you're doing the lights, you can go into the dark area, so this curtain here is going to be darker, so I can go right into that, not worrying about that. Just going to get the lights. Light to dark with watercolors. I'm just going to go in there. And now that it's wet, those of you who haven't seen my videos before, I do a wet into wet float your pigment washes. So once I put the pigment in the water down, I then have it wet and that's when I float other colors in there. I just don't use one color in an area. I kind of go in and then put, get some warms and cools and, and just float them into the wash, the wash of water. And the thicker the paint is when you're putting it into a wash, the less it's going to bleed away. It's just obvious that the more paint which is pigment, the more thicker it is, the more thicker, the thicker it is, the, the more it doesn't bleed all over. Now, so also remember, it's going to dry about 20% lighter. So if, you're, if this looks right, it's wrong, because it's going to dry 20% lighter. So you make it look like it's 20% darker than you want it. Very hard to do for watercolors, but it's... Um, it's very necessary that you need to make it a little bit darker because it's going to dry lighter. I'll do the back of her neck here. Her hair is going to be dark. And I'm not doing very much detail right now. Detail comes later when you have time and you get the big parts done. This is the beginning. This is the, this is the start. And you're going for the lights first. And just get those lights in there so that you can put your darks in later. On top of those and this the light will be all done middle tones will come next so this inside of that window is kind of a little bit of a greenish color so it's a little bit lighter let's go in there right now a little bit light here the shining through that little bit of area right there the sun's shining through and we're going to go right into maybe this um, radiator here it's not super dark, so we're just going to get the middle tone in there. Her, the maskoid is there, so I can go right into her right away. That's going to be darker later. But see, once I put down the paint, let's go in here. And that's again a middle tone. I squint my eyes at the photo to make it my value study. If you're a beginner and you really want to do a great job, is do a value study of this. Do a pencils value study of the big values in there. That would be great. I use it. I use the photograph as my value pattern, and I squint my eyes to see the values, and I don't look at the color. I look more for the values. Values are what you want to look for, especially when you're doing the first couple of washes. You want to look for those big, big areas of light and dark, but mostly the light because that's what you're doing right now. So here, a little cup of coffee. And the bedspread that she's on is kind of a brownish color, but I'm not just going to go with one color. I'm just going to do a bunch of colors there later on. But the light area has a little bit of tone in it, in it. And you can use whatever. You can use some warm colors, some cool colors. Go right into the dark. If you can see right here, I also put my name in with the masking pen so that later on I don't have to sign it. It'll just be signed already with the masking pen. A little bit of color here. Float it, float those pigments. All right, so there's my pretty much my light colors, right? I mean, there's not much light in here. It's all in the dark areas, right? So just watch your watch your areas of light and dark. Put those lights in, color those lights, make them fun, make them bright. You could also do this in a limited palette. You could use maybe three colors. You know, you can do that too. So it's a good thing for beginners to do is not have to worry about too many colors. I have this array of colors in here, but again, don't worry so much about the colors, worry about the values. 
And so if you're using, if you're a beginner and you want to just use three colors, use a good range of your dark, uh, light, and medium, basically. And then you can use, a, and actually if you use a dark, you can make it light by putting a lot of water in it. All right, so now I'm going to get my big brush, and now we're going to go for the big parts. And because it's about this time that um, all of my light areas are done. All my light areas, all the little light areas are done. Top of this, and now we're gonna go in. And I like to start in one area and work away from that area. So I'll be starting from here, going down and working around this way. All right, so I'm gonna, my value, um, actually my color scheme, I think is gonna be, let's make it orange and blue because uh, she is very warm, though she is pink and the green looks pretty decent too. So what I normally try to do is with the color scheme is try to think of that a color scheme as being the blue orange, the red green, and um, the, because they're complements. So since she does have pink on, so maybe we'll go with a greenish blue and then I'll make it an orangey yellow, right? Or an orangey red, I mean. So that's what we're going to be using. So let's, our blues, this is peacock blue. This is horizon blue. This is ultramarine deep. And so I'm just going to go into these colors. This is Prussian blue. Start with some blues here. And we're just going to wet as I go along. My paper is dry. And so I'm just going to wet as I go along. And why do I do that? Because I want a hard edge. When it's dry, the paper is dry, you get a hard edge. And I just want to do a little bit of a hard edge right here. Keep some of these lights to the side of the side of the curtain. And now this is a really bright blue. It's way too bright. And how do you dull that? You take an orange. This is brilliant orange. It's called brilliant orange. It's a beautiful color. But see how it grays down my blue then really easily? Because that's what complements do. They gray each other down. So I can just go back into ultramarine deep. Go down here and keeping that one side light. Now, while when it's wet, then I can add other colors into that, and I can float other colors. So if I want to put like an orange in there and make it look like it fades away into more of a gray, you can put it right into the wash that's already wet. And then, if you want, you can also um, soften the edge by pulling out some of the paint by just taking your brush, pulling it out, and that keeps it soft because the pigment is, is going to bleed back, and it's pretty thick my pigment there. Remember, the thicker the pigment is that you put down, the thicker it is, the less it's going to bleed into that wet wash then. It started out as a hard edge because it was dry, but now it's wet and now I mess around in there. Now I go in with a little bit thicker paint and I sculpt that curtain. See, I just sculpt it, I just go in there. And I can go right down, I'm not going to do pieces, I'm doing areas. So I'm going to go right into the floor, okay, right into the floor and then Float a little bit of warmth in there. The floor looks like it's a little bit warm color, so what, when it's wet, then just float a little bit of color in there. All right, so then we got that part. Now this little part, and I, I try to go in an area so that it makes it easy to go around. Now the spatter's from the water, that's, that's fine. You can get that, you can get rid of that later when I do a dark on top of it. And again, try to make this 20% darker than you like. It's got to look wrong. It's got to look like it's 20% darker because it's going to dry 20% lighter. So go right in there. Get some browns in my blue. This is um, imidazolone brown. I mix that with the blue. So brown is pretty much like an orange, right? And it's, it's earth tones. So that's what I'm using is blues and, blues and orange. going down. Now if that's not a bright enough color or you don't like how that color looks, then you have a time to take and put color into it. Float color in there. You can don't have to stick with that one color. It's not just not one color that you're using. You're using a multitude of colors in a wash when it's wet in the wet. So now that's pretty dark and gray. So I'm going to put a little bit of more blue, a little bit more blue in there. So I'm dipping into ultramarine deep. Just put it right in there. Watch my edges. See, they got a little bit messy right there. Oh well. Come around down this side. And this is not dark enough. It looks right, right? It looks like it's the perfect 
thing, but that's wrong because it's going to dry lighter, so I've got to make it look darker. A little bit of orange in there. A little bit of purple. I use a permanent violet for my purple. And now this is still a little damp, so it's, it's too light, so I'm just going to put these little darks right there in the, in the curtain right away again. As long as it's showing a, a sheen, that means it's still wet and it's floating. Your pigment's floating, so you can still go in there. Once it starts getting and loses its sheen, you can't go in there anymore because it's going to give you a watermark. Because in the water, it's wetter that area than when you, because you're putting in more water. It'll give you a nice watermark there. A nice watermark if you like watermarks. If you don't like watermarks, then make sure your brush is never wetter than the surface. So now I'm going to go into a little bit smaller brush because I'm going into little details in here. So if you want to change this blue to a little bit of green, you got to use a little bit of yellow in there. And I'll give you more of a turquoise kind of look. Now this week I'm working a little bit larger. Um, I usually use quarter sheets, but this one I used a half sheet. Almost a half sheet, but um, so it's going to take a little bit longer. Hopefully not too much longer, because I'm just working big areas. This is still nice and wet. Now these curtains are darker. So let's go in here and now wet this area. I like to wet with a color too. I don't matter, it doesn't matter what color I'm using. I'm just pick up some color here, because it's going to be darker. I'm going to go in and just get my hard edges, because it is dry. I don't have to worry, her hair is going to be darker than the curtain, so I can go right into the hair, and my masking fluid is already there to protect my highlights. Her highlights. <laughs> the, the lady's highlights, you just put them in, right? So we're going to go down here through her. Don't put it under her face, we don't want that. And around her book. And up. And I'm, I'm stopping right here only because this is a pretty big area, so, I mean, I could do this whole thing. And I will in a second, but first I want to just kind of get this kind of farther along than having to go back in. A little bit of red in there. And so I'm just going to make these little lines in here to make it look, go right in her head, doesn't matter. It's going to be, her head's going to be darker. It's going to be brown. She has, looks like she has blonde, but with the shadows, it's going to look very dark in there. And I know it looks a bit like it's crazily, crazy and out of control. But later on, I'll do the details, and that's when you start doing the details. Not now. I can't do details now. i got to get the big parts done first. Details like the around the book, those are important because I didn't mask the book off. If I did mask the book, then I could go right in there, but I didn't. So i got to go around the book. Now we're going to go in here and wet it and do our big areas. I changed a little bit. I put a, a little chair in there. I just thought it needed it because it seemed kind of blank. I wasn't even going to put a painting in there. It's up to you. If you want to put a painting on the wall, that, you can do that too. I just decided not to. And I also decided not to... Oh, that lamp is... Why would I go around it if that lamp is dark? I'm just going to go right through it, right? Because it's darker. If it was light and lit up, then I would have to do it a little bit differently. But it's, it's not on. And I decided to keep it off because... Um, I like the light just being here and, and hitting her. If we had two directions of light, I don't think it would be as nice. Just my choice. You can, you know, if you like it, don't put the light on. Now the chair rail, I'm going to watch you to watch how I do this. I'm going to go over it first, these lights, and I'm going to pull it out afterwards, after I get my, my darks in here. I'll pull it out with my brush. So I dipped in again to the ultramarine deep. I go into this little bit of red here. It's called light red. Just shining this paper. If I lay it flat, will it be less shiny? It's okay. It's okay? Okay. So here again, go in, get your big areas. And if you're a tight painter and you really like to have it really, really tight, just slow down a little bit. You don't have to do it as fast as I do. Go slower. You don't have to go, this is not a speed race. This is not, we're not, whoever gets on first is the winner. It's not how it works. We're just going to go in. Some people are a little bit slower. Some people are a little bit faster. Some people are a little bit more tighter with their paintings. It's all good. You just go at your speed. Don't try to keep up with me because I'm 
this is not my normal speed. I'm trying to get it done within the hour time, so. All right, so there we have the darks in there. And all this dark creates this beautiful glow that'll be coming through the window later on. Up here, I'm just gonna put a little warmth in the upper corner here just to get rid of that light. This is now almost dry, so that's good. I can go back in there and get a little bit of that light, soften it. And I was saying that I'm gonna get this chair rail in here. So what you can do is you either wait until it's dry, because I'm using Stonehenge paper, Stonehenge aqua paper, and um, it wipes up really easily. But I can go in here like this with my brush and just pull out, you can just pull out the chair rail and also the baseboard. There's a little baseboard right here. I can just pull it out. And I'd rather do it this way then go around it and give it a hard edge because it really shouldn't have a hard edge even though it's white if you squint your eye at this picture you really don't see it that well i mean it's not white it's in shadow so i don't want it white so i just want it to be a little bit of a suggestion that that's there all right so now we're right onto the covers so i'm going to take my smaller brush because we're working a little bit in a little smaller area always use the brush that best fits the purpose for what you're doing So this is kind of limited palette here, as you can see, but I say limited palette, but I'm using all my colors. I'm dipping into a lot of different things. It's just that it's not as bright and colorful as your, you know, everyday painting that I do where you're using flowers and you're getting all kinds of color, bright colors in there. This is a more moody piece, and so I'm not going to be using really super bright, bright colors on everything. And now I'm going in here and trying to figure out where the shadow is. Oh, shadow goes all the way to here. And I'm doing it on dry paper again, and I'm doing it on dry paper because I want hard edges to where the shadow is. And then here, where all those folds are that are in the cloth, there I keep them soft edged. And there I put a, um, a lot of paint on my brush, and I just kind of go in and get those folds and such. But they're all within the shadow area, so nothing in this area can be as light as in the light area. So first again, let's go in and get our big area. Let's make this like a brownish, reddish, warm color comforter. And so we'll go in here. And this is all dark, right? So just wet it, just wet it. What color doesn't matter? Because I'm just, I want it wet and then I'll float color into that. Ooh, I'm getting a little spe speckles on there. Sorry guys. The way you can get rid of those is you take your brush and try to make it the same surface as the surface because it's still wet. And so I'm just going to brush in there. I'm getting too excited here. I'm splattering all over. So I'm, my brush is the same wetness as the paper. So if I just kind of push the paint, the pigment around, it's going to soften itself again. You don't soften anything in watercolor. It softens itself. So you just have to push it around. But your brush cannot be wetter than the surface because that's what happens. It makes little watermarks. All right. So a little peacock, a little ultramarine blue again. This Midazolone brown has like it's like a purpley brown. Um, somebody just asked if they could use a credit card. Yeah, you can use a credit card to make things, but what you're doing is you're getting rid of the paint. If you use a credit card, let me just ask that question if they can use a credit card to make the folds. You can do it in the light area, but in the dark area, you scrape away the paint and um, Unless it's really wet, then you gouge into the thing and then you make a dark edge that way too. So yeah, you can do it that way. Here we're taking Prussian blue, make it a little bit darker in this corner. And again, the thicker you make the paint in the wet wash, the less it's gonna bleed all over the place. And you can make those hard edge lines they're not hard edged, they're soft edged, but they're harder than the hard edge that's on dry paper. See how I can control the paint? It's the amount of paint you have on your brush compared to the water. And if you're using pure pigment with hardly any water on your brush, you can control that edge to make those little areas of um, folds. But I wanna keep everything in this area darker than anything else in the light area. The light area is the light area, the dark area is the dark area. You know, you've gotta separate those two. Otherwise, you don't get the light effect. And the figure, how do you do the figure? The figure is all about the drawing. 
If your drawing is good, it's going to be fine. You do it the same way you do anything else in watercolor. But you have to have your drawing good. It's got to be on. And a figure even more so than like in a tree or a, something in nature. Because um, if I, his, our, that person's arm is off, it's going to look off. If a branch on a tree is off, nobody's going to know. And so it's just a little one of those things. If you're doing portraiture or figures in your watercolors, drawing has to be on. Coming down here. Get them do the edges of the light hard edged, which is fine because it is um, where the light hits the dark. That's okay to have it mostly hard edged. You can have some soft edges in there later. And I've saved the lights so I don't have to worry about those. And this here, I'm going to float a little bit of orange in here just because we're doing blue and orange, right? So just float a little bit of that in there because the, the warmth is going to float into the shadow area a little bit too. And again, the thicker the paint is, the less it's going to bleed all over the place. And that's, if you're doing a portrait, that's really important to learn how to do because you're, you want the edges to be soft edged and you have to learn how to use enough paint to stop it from bleeding all over in a wet wash because that gives you the soft edges. The bottom of our foot is dark, so I'm just going to go right in there, make it warm. And it kind of combines right into the, the comforter here. It kind of throws a shadow, her foot throws a shadow into the light area. And it looks kind of odd because I'm kind of painting over my masking fluid, and that'll create the light later on anyway, so. I don't have to, again, I don't have to worry about those areas of light. They will come out really easily later on. And see how light this got, portion got now? The thing is, you can always go back over an area, a big area like that, so you just re-wet it when it gets, if it doesn't get dark enough the first time, which is a big thing for us watercolorists because we just don't get it that we have to paint 20% darker. And making it 20% darker it makes it look wrong, right, when you're painting. But once you get it back up, it is fine. You can do that again. So now I'm going to go on this side and get this side of the bed. And I'll go right into my person in a second. This is a little bit more detailed, so i got to go around this cup here. I did do the little masking fluid, so I didn't... So I moved it. Okay, let's go down here. I'm looking for the shadow part. And then that's all dark, right? So just to wet this whole area. And then sculpt. You're like a sculptor. You're kind of going in there and sculpting and putting all different colors in there, taking the blues. And once you start your painting, your color scheme is right there. So you don't have to you dip into the same ones. And actually, I can just use this by just scooping it up because I've already used it other places. So it's going to be the same, right? So you can just go into these areas that you already have on your palette. And I actually sometimes let it mix here on the pal on the paper too. I just go in there and let it mix all itself. All right, there's the and look at the nice warmth of orange and stuff in the blue. It's gonna look good. All right, now her leg and such. I didn't get the warmth in there, so real quickly I'm gonna go in here with some warm darks. And I'm using this is Scarlet Lake, which is red, Scarlet Lake, and this is Brilliant Orange. I put those in there right away. They're dark. I do have pinks. I have a brilliant pink and a shell pink. And these pinks, if you mix with, with the orange, the brilliant orange, get some really beautiful coral and flesh tones. So those are kind of fun to get by using colors that have a little bit of opacity to them. It's okay to have a little bit of opacity in colors because if you're using it really wet, it's going to turn out um, transparent. And it's a lot of people don't understand that. It's like, yes, it is an opaque color, but you can make it transparent by just adding water. Because it's still, it'll be transparent because you don't have that much pigment. And it's, it is opaque pigment, but there's not much of it. And so you're going to get more of a, a look of transparency than it was be this big, dark, or kind of gouache look. Gouache being opaque watercolor. All right, now the side of the radiator should be a little bit darker, right? So let's go in there real quick. And I'm not putting in the line, I'm just putting in the overall part. It should be a little bit darker. 
and the whole wall on the sides are going to be darker so I'll show you how to do that again didn't get dark enough but I did it on purpose I'll tell you <laughs> yep did it on purpose everything I do is on purpose right <laughs> okay so there we got a little a little bit darker now again that's going to dry 20% lighter too so maybe just a little bit darker and then it'll be 20% lighter and I'll do a little bit of the curves on here all right so while this is all drying and I let me put a wash of her on there so she's got pink she's got a pink outfit on right so that doesn't mean you have to just use all pink in there matter of fact the only pink you see is in the light area inside here you yes there's a little bit of pink but that is really dark gray it's a grayish pink so how do you gray the pink you have red and what do you use red you have kind of a green so a bluish green to dull that down it makes it a brown pretty much anytime you use compliments you either make it gray or a brown so and it doesn't have to be exact color as long as it's close to what you've been using here it'll be fine so I'm going in there now and and here you definitely want to float some nice colors you don't want it to look like she didn't wash her outfit in a while so get a little warmth that's fine look at it really dark back in here so I'm gonna put that back in there real quick Get that in there real quick. I don't have to worry about the front of the face because I put masking fluid there. And now a little bit of dark in here. Look how many colors are in there. I have a Scarlet Lake. I've got a little bit of this blue, Prussian blue. What else can I put in there? A little bit of orange. Throw that in there. And while it's wet, you can put all this stuff in there. And then you look at the picture and you start looking for where the folds and stuff. And that's where you take the little bit darker color. And pretty thick you don't want to use it thin because you can't because it'll just bleed all over the place right I mean you can't put a thin wash over to create the um, folds you have to use it thick because you're working wet in the wet and so sometimes what you can do is you can take your brush take it on paper towel or like a cloth cloth towel like I'm using and just dab it in there and use the paint thick and get rid of the water in your brush I usually put that on one side and leave the other side to take the water out and then you go in there with a thick amount of paint in a wet wash. Again, it's got to be in a wet wash so that it, it looks transparent and it floats. Floats your pigment. And I can even use lighter colors, like this shell pink has almost white in it. Watch this, this is very wet, but if I use it in a wet wash, it just bleeds out and it looks so, it'll look like she has a silk outfit on, right? Look at that, isn't that cool? Just get in there and um, don't worry about transparency and opaques and just use the color you want and then float it if it is more opaque because if you float it into the water, it will look very transparent. Very, very transparent. All right, so now I gotta go down here by your arm, get that all wet. Actually, her whole leg and all that is really dark down here, so um, I'm just going to go around there and just put a big wash in there of medium tones. Medium tones are good because later on I can get either go dark, and if I want to pull a little of the lights out, I'll just pull a little bit of that light out into the, by um, scraping it back to the paper. So right now I'm just going to put a middle tone in there, and then I can go get some of the darks later. That hand she has there is actually darker than her leg and so I have an opposite so sometimes you can do that too if you don't like how it is the values in that little areas change it you can change it you're the artist you can do whatever you want all right so then on this cup here all right so we'll let her dry oh we got this oh, one more thing let's get her hair done and sitting inside for so long in this quarantine her hair is way messy right so <laughs> put it up here and we'll just get it put a little darks in there the lights I don't have to worry about I put masking fluid there I'm just putting in a beautiful wash of color and right down her neck is dark Look at her neck is dark right down there and the drawing is underneath and I use the masking fluid to kind of get the drawing so I'm all good to do this bigger area. I don't need to go really detailed right now. Just going to go in there and drop in some of the big washes. Get it dark where it's supposed to be dark. 
put a little bun. She put her hair in a bun up here. Then um, the window is shining this way on her head, so why not put a little bright orange on this side, right? I mean, look at that. If you put something, and even white, or maybe this pink I'll put in there. Put it really bright there. And it's floating in water, so it'll be, it'll just spread out evenly and nicely. And later on, if you actually want to put like um, white little lines for the lights, that's fine too. No law saying that you can't do that. No watercolor law. There's certain um, shows that you can't get accepted into, but go ahead, use opaques if you need to. Just watch when you're entering certain um, shows. There are certain shows that don't allow opaques. So now we're gonna go in and, while this is still wet, I, I notice I wanna get a few of these a little bit darker areas in the folds. And you gotta get them while they're wet so they can get them soft edged. You can do it later too. You can go in later while it's, um, and re-wet it. But while it's wet and we're right in this area anyways, go ahead and just put a few things in there right away. And when it's wet like this, it's really amazing that you can really put in pretty thick. It's almost like you're using oil paints or acrylics, because that's how thick I use it. I'm, I'm scooping it up and I'm putting it into the water. Like look at right inside here under the cuff of her pants. A little dark right there. Behind there later, I'm gonna negative paint her leg out. Oh, I'll do it right now. A little bit right there. See what else going on up here. Anybody asking any questions? Yep, yeah. okay, let's keep on. So now I'm gonna do the window. The window's still in here. Let that dry. And um, I'll do this, and then I'm gonna go back into my curtains because they there's no difference from the wall. That's all the same, right? So we'll get uh, we'll get in there and get that taken care of. But first let's do the grays of the window. And the grays, look at all this color I have here. If I just mix any of these together, look at these beautiful grays I'll get. You don't have to go mix or mix a gray. You've, you've worked with two different colors, the warms and the cools, mix them together. You're gonna get some beautiful grays. So I'm gonna go in here and get the outer edge of the windows. And again, it looks really dark right now because it's really wet, but once it dries, it's gonna dry 20% lighter. And I don't care what color gray this is because I'm putting it down very wet, and then I'm gonna add some other colors to it. I'm gonna feel like, okay, is this too warm, too cool? And then I'll add to that. But I can't do it until I put some of the some of it down. All right, so that is kind of a warm gray. And so if I wanna put a little blue in there, maybe in the top I wanna put a little bit darker, a little bit bluer. Just put it, float it right in there. On the bottom, I noticed there's a little bit of lights hitting right here. So there, I'm just gonna pull out some of the paint. So I just pull it out, I just dry my brush, dry my brush, and I just pull it out. And then on the wall, later on, I'm gonna get that to be a little bit darker and I'll show the lights coming right through there. A little bit warm outside, it's a little bit warmer in here, so look at that, I'm gonna put a little bit of light in there. Now this beam going across on the side here, just go right in there right away. And you notice I'm using a half inch brush because look at it, it's just so perfect. Why would I use a round brush for a rectangular object? Because if you use a round brush, then you have to paint all the edges. Here is just a one brush stroke. Always try to make your brush strokes one brush stroke and not where you're actually drawing with it. Let's look at it, how easy it is just to go straight down with this brush. And if I want a little bit wider, I push a little bit harder with the brush. If you push a little bit harder, it makes it a little wider. The handle is darker, so I go right over through that. If it was lighter, I would have masked, masked, masked it out. And again, I'm not worried about the actual color here. I first want to put down the value. And now I'm going to float some color. Let's see. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. Just float it in there. Just put it right into the wash you just did. A little warmth in there. Because it, it makes it come forward, right? And so uh, maybe I put a little bit of that orange, I may, may put a little bit of that over here too. But I like it so much there, I put a little bit on this side. Bring it right to the top of the window here. Make sure that was tissue paper. Just take that back a little bit there. 
Outside is nothing. Here's a little bit of the window that's in the background that's going through the window. You can see a little bit of this window. So there it's going to be a little bit lighter, so just put that in. And how detailed you are depends on how slow you'll go and how more you know, precise you'll be. I'm doing this pretty fast and just trying to get it done. So I'm going fast. If you want to make it a little bit cleaner, spend some time on it. You don't have to rush it. You don't have to rush through this. You can go back into the video and just stop it and then go back on later. like I have a couple of friends from the American Academy watching. Hey Dave, Dave First was uh, a person I went to school with, good friend, um, took Shapiro's class. Well, actually, no, we were in Fundamentals, Krzyzewski's class. Maybe I went to American Academy of Art. Krzyzewski was the tough teacher, but he was fun. There we go. Um, so that's pretty much the window, right? We'll put the handle in later. We'll put the edge on there later for the detail parts. Now I just gotta get that little bit right there. So blue and orange is pretty much my compliments right now, and so I'm just gonna stick with that. And so I'm gonna do like a turquoise. So with that I'm gonna mix a little bit of peacock blue, a little bit of yellow, makes it a little bit more turquoise. And so in here I'm gonna come in, it's gotta be a little lighter, so add more water. Anytime you want to make a darker color lighter, just add more water when you have it down on the, on the paper. And here it kind of messed up there, so I'm just going to scrub a little bit on the paper to pull that out again. So nice and clean it, cleans it up. And I'm just going to use a little bit of this dirty color and go right down in here. Pull it down to this part, make your shadow come across there. And now that looks really dark, right? It's gonna dry 20% lighter. I've been telling you that all the time, right? So, make it a little bit darker. Make it just a little bit darker. And try not to go in this area because now I just made a watermark. Oh well. And also in eaves of things, remember I was telling last week, if you were in here last week, that in the eaves of things you can put orange and it makes it look really cool. So watch that. Put a little orange up there, float it right into the, into the blue. It'll turn kind of brown, but that's okay. So then this has a little, I'm gonna put a little shadow in there. A little shadow across here. What else again? Okay, let's go into this area real quick. This is dry now. Feel with the back of your hand. A little hard to feel with the back of your gloves here, though. <laughs> so that didn't work so. That didn't work so great. So let's go with our big brush again. And now I'm going to go in here and get this curtain darker again. Actually, let's go with this round brush. It's a little bit too big, Brett. That brush right now. So I'm going to go in into the curtain again. I'm going to start out again like I did the first time, and I'm going to do the hard edges and then soften it as I go along. I need it dark, so a lot of pigment, dark pigment, so blue and orange, brown makes it, makes it um, complements. I've been saying brown a lot, and Gary's probably used back there going, what? Brown? <laughs> we have a running thing going with browns. I call them purples. <laughs> so here we go. So dark right by the radiator. Got a little bit of blue coming through here. So you can stop an edge by using thicker amounts of paint. And stop the edge. So underneath here. What are we looking for? The time. Ten minutes. We still got. Okay. So let's put this up here. Let's get this curtain real quick. We may run over a little bit because it is a quarter sheet or full or half sheet, and it is a figure. So we can give us a little bit more time if we need to. So here again, going right into her. Don't worry about her. She's fine. She's got masking fluid on her. She's all protected. All right, Jane. Jane asks the question, is it better to have all cool colors in the background? Um, 
Yeah, because then the then the warm colors will flow forward. You can put you can float some of the warm colors in the background, but mostly it has to be cool. Mostly it has to be cool. That way it keeps it back. It doesn't project forward then. Dark here. See what I'm doing in here. It's like my screen is froze, so you're gonna have to believe me. <laughs> I'm gonna believe you that I'm doing it right. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the lamp. So now we're in the detail stage. We got pretty much all the big areas done, right? Oh, one more thing here. I gotta make it a little bit darker. I'm dipping into pure black and Prussian blue and a little bit of violet and a little bit of brown. Those are my darkest colors, right? And so now this is wet. And so I can get almost like a black in here. And it's gonna be a soft edge because I'm working in the wet. But then this lamp is really dark, right? So I'm just gonna go in here and just paint it with this dark that I just mixed here. Go down, and I know there's a few little reflections in this lamp. I'm gonna put those in too. There's the inside of the lamp that you can see a little bit, so I'll just do that. And again, it has to be dry, the paper has to be dry so you can, you can get the hard edges. You can always pull out some of these reflections by just pulling out the brush, take the brush and wipe it off and it sucks, it, sucks in the paint. See, I'm just sucking in the paint and that kind of gives you the soft edges. Now this line here has to be nice and straight, so add your finger, your pinky on the edge here, and then just pull the line straight down. Boom, one shot. Don't sit there and try to do it slow. Just go down and get it done. Now in there, if you want to make uh, one side lighter, you can also watch this. I go right over top of it with a little bit of orange on one side. Look at that. A little light. Looks like it's hitting it from that side, right? If it's too much, then yeah, put a little orange in here too. What the heck? All right, so let's take this masking fluid off. Uh, I gotta find my rubber cement picked up. I'll show you what I do with that. Here it is. So this is a rubber cement pickup, and what I'm gonna do is you gotta make sure this is all dry, and I'm just gonna rub it off like this. Am I still alive, Gary? Am I still alive? Yeah. Okay, good. My screen froze, so I don't know if I'm live or not. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to take out the masking fluid, and I go. Definitely make sure this is totally dry, and I rub real slowly. I don't kind of go across like this. Just really back and forth, really fast. Rub it off like this. Get all the edges done. I think everything's dry here. That part's a little bit wet, but I'm gonna leave her head a little bit because I'm gonna go in there and um, get some darks in there. Oh, sorry, I'm putting my head in the way, right? See how little those little hairs are? That's because the whole by masking fluid pen works really well, small, really thin lines. Really, really thin lines you can get with that masking fluid pen. And you probably some people are going to ask me where you can get that. Um, I usually um, tell them you can get it at Vermont Art Supply. VermontArtSupply.com. They have a lot of Holbein products that you can get. Okay, I think she's set. Now, detail stage. So you go with your small brush, right? You don't take your big brush to do detail. One second, let me blow this off here real quick. A little bit of rubber hanging around there. And let's see if I can get my thing working again. Nope, I'm frozen up there. All right, so now we're gonna go and get details. 
And when I talk details, I mean like get her hand look right. And this is like, look at the picture and copy what you see in the picture. Here, inside her hand there, a little dark and detailed. Her finger and then another finger. You even put, I'm gonna do her fingernails there. I'm gonna do some orange on her fingernails. And then here, her thumb and a little shadow on her thumb. Oh, the side of the book. There's a little bit of dark right there, right? So let's go in there. And since the shadow, to make it look like a shadow, if I go with the blue, it'll look more like a shadow than if I use warm colors, right? Because this states shadow, because it's blue. So if I make this side of this book blue, it's gonna state it as, yeah, that'll be shadow also. And then again, I first put in the blue. That doesn't mean you, you can't put in other colors either. You can then take a little bit of orange and float it in there just to make it look like it's shining back into that area, into the page. Later on, you'll see it. I'll put it on, um, I'll put it on Facebook again, the actual painting. And actually, um, I put these all my paintings up for sale later on on my website at davidrbecker.com. You can buy them and help me out with my, my monthly rent <laughs> for my plays here. Again, thanks for all those people that did donate and actually bought uh, paintings of mine. So super nice of you guys. Can't thank you enough for keeping my place open here. No, don't forget Lucy next door. She's uh, got a great place called the Studio McHenry. She's got a great store over there, and we're going to try to hopefully one day get our paint parties back into session. We have not done a paint party in so long, and I know some people have said they want to try it on Zoom. I still have a lot of doing to even do a class on Zoom. I've got to learn a bunch of stuff, and so it's going to take a little bit of time before I can get into that. It, I'm trying to learn how to do this, these camera things, and so we'll get there. We'll get there. It's just going to take a little bit longer than I ex expected. There we're going down, and we're going to go around now and negative paint the uh, because it's dark underneath her her sleeve right there. It's kind of dark, and this is details. Details are fun because you're starting to make things look good. You know, the rest of the painting usually doesn't look so great when you're painting it because you're just doing big areas and there's no detail involved. And so it doesn't look so awesome a lot of times when you're doing the big areas. And um, it shouldn't. I always, my instructor, Irving Shapiro, always said, you gotta go through the uglies. Your painting goes through the uglies, your watercolor, before you get to the, the good stuff, the details. Details will pull everything together. And then it, on the figure, of course, it's gotta be drawn right. So. All this um, drawing underneath, I gotta follow because I've gotta make it look like this person. I can't, you know, fake it a little bit here and there. Especially the important parts that, you know, should be in a certain spot. Her hand should look like a certain part on the book. If it doesn't look right, you know, does it, her hand look like it's falling off? You just gotta watch out for stuff like that. That it uh, looks right. That's why drawing is so important. It's gotta make it look like it, what it is. So here, I'm, just, I'm covering up some of the light lights in there. And while I'm doing this, I'm using my small round number eight brush. My brushes you can order online. I'm gonna give myself a plug here. You can get a, order, a set of six of these brushes. These brushes I'm using right now for $60. You can get them online. There's, there's the one and one quarter. There's the half inch. There's the number four rigger. There's the number eight round. The number eight round, a half inch. And number 16 round. Those are my Becker Art brushes. They're Holbein Gold, Holbein Gold um, brushes. And if you want other sizes than I have, you can get those too at like um, Vermont Art Supply. They have the different sizes. I only have these six sizes, so that's all I need. I may try to get another round, like a little bit bigger than this, and not as quite as big as the 16. Maybe looking into that. If you want that color or that, or that sizes, you can get them as Holbein Gold brushes. They just won't have my name on them. But they're magic if you get my name on there, right? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Go in there and just get these darks. All right, what's she drinking? Some tea here. Throw a shadow off this, off this cup. Again, these are all details now. So look at the picture, see what you see in the picture, and follow it. That's why you have the reference material. 
you don't have to fake this stuff because this is now is the real deal. This is the detail to make it look like whatever it is. Uh, you don't have to fake this part. Just go in and find out what it looks like on the picture and copy it. That's why you have reference material. And my job as an illustrator, we didn't ever have ref reference material. That's how come I can pretty much make everything up. So if there's something I don't see on a picture, I just make it up. So as an illustrator, a storyboard illustrator, you just pretty much make everything up. Client comes to you or the art director comes to you and asks you to do a certain type of thing. And you just have to draw it and paint it. And I'm putting a book together. Hopefully one of these days I can get it done on how to work from your imagination, how to draw and sketch from your imagination. I've been working on it for now about, I think this is about the third year. Um, hopefully I'll get done soon. Actually, it's already written. I just have to get it, get the um, pictures and everything, because it's more of a, a sketchbook. It's where you sketch inside the book, and you, I give you assignment every, every day for 66 days. I've got a little bit of treats right there. She has some treats her for herself, the macaroons. Shadows of that. And a little color in this light areas that um, I didn't have color in before. A little warmth in the light area. Just a little tint. What is a tint? A tint is a lot of water with just a little bit of color. That's what a tint is. And a wash is a lot of pigment. A lot of pigment with a lot of water where it's floating, that's pigment. That's what I call a, a wash. A tint is just really a lot, little amount of paint with a lot of water. All right, so back to this area over here. Uh-oh, we went over the hour mark. So we're almost done, hold on. Don't leave yet. We almost got two more things and we'll be good. I think we're getting pretty close here. Oh, the glasses. I got a pair of glasses there. They're sitting on the floor there. I got to take the masking fluid off. And here we got a little masking fluid. And then, we'll do our hair a little bit up here. Get our hair back into a nice array. Some parts go down dark. Part of her ear. Back of her hair. around a little bit. What else we got here? We got the inside of the hand. And you notice I'm not using any more different colors because I've got to stick with what I have now. I can't start adding colors that are no longer are not available or try new colors because we got to stick with these colors that we started with. Details are fun because that's where you clean up everything. You clean up every little part that you messed around with in the beginning. Like the side of this window. Look at it. Just nice and clean now. A little handle there. Little lines. And how detailed is up to you. But you still start it the same way. It doesn't matter how detailed you are and the styles you're using. It all depends on the very end how detailed you want to get and how loose you are. They're all good. You can go really tight. You can go really loose. Everybody has a different style and that's fine. That's a good thing. So I'm going to go in here and and identify the chair rail again by just putting a little bit of dark in there. That's going to bleed into there. Top of the chair rail. So I'm just negative painting these parts in now. And I'm just bleeding it out. A little bit of blue warmth. Nice to see on the screen, but <laughs> it's still frozen. <laughs> Let me step back for a second and look at it from a distance. Uh, that's so another way of doing it, to look at something from a distance makes it look like it holds together. I think I just need to do a little bit of warmth in these light areas. And then I think we're gonna be good to go. Base of the lamp. What's that? Base of the lamp. Oh yeah, we can do a face here. There really isn't a base on there, but, oh. but I'm just gonna put the edge of that just to kind of see, there we go. Neck here. 
Yeah, this is supposed to be behind, but it's kind of weird how that kind of not the best composition right there. Side of her hand. Oh, the glasses. Yeah. Glasses. Dark parts of the glasses. And there wouldn't be shadow on here because it's in the shadow. I'm not sure why I even put masking fluid there because it's in the shadow of the glasses. But I can do whatever I want. I'm the artist. So I always say. Okay. Well, I think that is it. Let me take the masking fluid off. I mean, the masking fluid, the tape off, and I think we'll be done again for another another beautiful week. And again, watch out for my um, for if you're a beginner and you want to try this, and um, watch my website, David. Uh, BeckerArt.net, right there. Just check out my website, and I'm going to be starting to do some. I'm not sure what day yet. Maybe a Thursday. Well, I'll be doing beginners, and we'll be starting all the same picture. And I probably go a little bit slower with that, those. This is more for advanced. And I can't get the mask. All right, here we go. Remember, when you're taking the um, the tape off, always pull away from the painting. Don't just pull straight up. Just pull away like this. On the side. And just like this. Again, always away. Pull away so it doesn't rip into the paper. I always push up the paper a little bit, start it, go like this. And again, I didn't answer many questions. I wasn't looking up very much and my my screen froze anyways, but if, you're, if you have questions, please put them on, on the website or on Facebook. Just put them up there and I will, after I'm done here, I will go through and answer all those questions if you had some. And um, next week we'll do it again. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me every Saturday morning. And um, if you actually also, also, if you have suggestions on something you want painted or an idea um, that you want me to paint or something that you think I should be covering, let me know. I'd love to hear it. And I'll maybe try to get it in there. All right, so thanks a lot. Everybody have a great weekend. And happy Mother's Day, everybody. All you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. See you next week.